Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content, process, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is archiving, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Secure and Preserve Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll discuss the several different alternatives for archiving, including centralized storage versus manage in place, web archiving, web storage, the cloud, and integration with legacy or line of business systems. Centralized storage, also referred to as storage consolidation or storage convergence, is a method of centralizing data storage among multiple servers. The objective is to facilitate data backup and archiving for all subscribers in an enterprise, while minimizing the time required to access and store data. Other desirable features include simplification of the storage infrastructure, centralized and efficient management, optimized resource utilization, and low operating cost. If users' requests for information only require data from one functional area to answer, say finance people only ask for information in the finance domain, human resources people only ask for HR information, etc., then managing it in place, or in a silo, or book of record, may be just fine. But if users consistently want information that can only be produced using data from multiple areas, then you essentially have to build a centralized storage facility. In other words, if an organization's storage needs are mainly driven by a business need to consolidate and coordinate the information that will be used by the enterprise as a whole, then centralize. If not, and you're sure there are no long-term implications, then silos are fine. Centralized storage comes in three different varieties. Network Attached Storage, or NAS, NAS, Redundant Array of Independent Disks, or RAID, and the Storage Area Network, or the SAN. In NAS, the hard drive that stores the data has its own network address. Files can be stored and retrieved rapidly because they don't compete with other computers for processor resources. In a RAID setup, the data is located on multiple disks and the array appears as a single logical hard drive. This facilitates balanced overlapping of input-output operations and provides fault tolerance, minimizing downtime and the risk of catastrophic data loss. The SAN is the most sophisticated architecture and usually employs fiber channel technology. SANs are noted for high throughput and the ability to provide centralized storage for numerous subscribers over a large geographic area. SANs also support data sharing and data migration among servers. Web archiving is the process of collecting portions of the World Wide Web and ensuring the collection is preserved in an archive, such as an archive site, for future researchers, historians, and the public to utilize. Due to the web's massive size, Web archivists typically employ web crawlers for automated collection. The largest web archiving operation based on a crawling approach is the Internet Archive, which strives to maintain an archive of the entire web. National libraries, national archives, and various consortia of organizations are also involved in archiving culturally important web content. And there are commercial web archiving software and services available to organizations that need to archive their own web content for corporate heritage, regulatory, or legal purposes. Read Technology and Information Services is one of these. Though it sounds similar to web archiving, web storage, in fact, is something different, as it refers to storing or backing up data over the Internet. Many third-party storage providers are in business today that let users upload and store all types of computer files, which typically can be shared by password or made public to anyone with Internet access and a web browser. Many services, Box.net and Dropbox.com, to name two, offer a limited amount of disk space for free with monthly fees for higher capacities. 
Cloud storage is a variant on both of these themes as it uses a model of networked online storage whereby data is stored on multiple virtual or physical servers, generally hosted by third parties rather than being hosted on dedicated servers. Hosting companies operate large data centers and people who require their data to be hosted buy or lease storage capacity from them and use it for their storage needs. The data center operators in the background virtualize the resources according to the requirements of the customer and expose them as storage pools, which the customers can themselves use to store files or data objects. The problem is that the term cloud today has come to be used as a metaphor for the Internet itself, a usage rooted in the early cloud-shaped drawings used originally to represent the telephone network and later to depict the Internet in computer diagrams as an abstraction of the underlying infrastructure it represents. A legacy system may include procedures or terminology that are no longer relevant in the current context, and may hinder or confuse understanding of the methods or technologies used. In order for a legacy system or line of business system archive to be used in a modern business process by departments outside its resident information silo, it must be integrated with other applications using middleware and message brokering applications or other apps that allow for enterprise application integration. To this end, the Service Object Access Protocol, or SOAP, is the protocol most used to enable the integration of web services with legacy and line of business systems. SOAP, encoded in XML and HTTP, is a message passing channel and serves as a platform independent uniform invocation mechanism between web services. Using the web as a medium, developers can build a framework that allows for several important things. The identification of reusable business logic in large legacy systems in the form of major legacy components. The identification of interfaces between the legacy components and the rest of the legacy system. The automatic generation of coded wrappers such as CORBA to enable remote access. And finally, the seamless interoperation with web services via HTTP based on the SOAP messaging mechanism. The so-called service web has emerged as a promising framework to address the issues related to process integration and accessing a legacy archive or creating a new internet-based archive from legacy and line of business archives by the web. This module discussed several alternatives for archiving, including centralized storage versus managed in place, web archiving, web storage, the cloud, and integration with legacy or line of business systems. Next, you may wish to review the module on standards and their effect on archiving. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.